So if you've been watching my entire refutation, um, thank you for your time. It has been very lengthy. Um, a lot of hours went into it, and despite that, it, it turned out not to be very professionally edited footage, really. But I originally envisaged doing it as one large video. Uh, but then I had the, in my mind part way through filming, I, I suddenly realised how big it was getting, and I'd already spent so many hours of putting in the time for the material that I, I didn't want to redo it. So I broke it into episodes in the end, but it wasn't originally envisaged like that. The bottom line is that there was just so much ground that I needed to cover with this guy. Uh, I've been following his channel and watching his content for, for many months now, almost a year. When I first started watching his videos, I felt somewhat sorry for him because he explained uh, in some of his earlier videos about how um, he, he confronted his uh, church pastor and he confronted other Christians and he started asking about some of these scriptures that he was reading and some of these passages were troubling him and they they walked away from his questions. They, so he he was unanswered, uh, those questions were left unresolved. But then as I watched his content again and prepared for this refutation and, and worked on my material for it, I started to repent of my sympathy towards him because I started to realise he, he is not a sorry simpleton whose pastoral needs were just not being met, okay? He, he knows very well what the Bible says. And he knows exactly what we, as free grace advocates, actually believe. But he has thrown armies of straw men against free grace soteriology. He, he's made constant false accusations and lies about what we believe. And there were just so many examples of him butchering the scriptures to teach a false gospel. Like uh, in his video exposing Norm Diamante or Good Hope. He said that free grace teaches that once you make a profession of faith and you believe for one second and then you can just go off and become an atheist or a Hindu or a Muslim and, st and still be saved. But that's not what we believe at all, folks. And in fact, if somebody does become an atheist or a Muslim, they don't continue in their belief. What we would say about that person is that they were never saved to begin with. Okay, they never believed onto eternal life. Any belief that they had was in vain. Okay, why? Because Jesus knew from the beginning who believed not, okay, and who would betray him. That's what free grace actually believes, and, and we have biblical proof for that, okay? We can back that up with the Bible. And he went on to say that you could go on a serial killing rampage and, and be saved. But, but this is the same old boring straw man argument that we constantly hear from every unsafe person. You know, my question is why would a born again person want to go out on a shooting rampage anyway that that doesn't even make any sense uh, and all he's doing really epiusio and when he makes these false accusations of these stupid questions is that he's revealing what sins are on his wicked heart and it's only the fear of hell that stops him from doing these things okay and but the thing is folks just go and look up uh, on the internet do a search on famous last words of serial killers okay you won't find any of them saying, hey, I'm going to heaven, so, you know, why not? Why the hell not? Let's just go out and kill everybody, because I can. That, they, In fact, they say the opposite. They say things like, I don't care if I live or die, or I'm go I'll am i be in hell for, for this, you know, before you even start breakfast or something like that. They, that's some of the weird and crazy stuff that they actually say. And even if the ones that did say something about God, okay, it, it, it doesn't mean that they believed the gospel, though. And often they said something that was so ludicrous, it, it proved that they weren't safe. So the, this idea that all these serial killing people are just, you know, waltzing into heaven, it, it's not happening, folks, okay? It, it's a complete straw man. And so he, he makes it out as if everybody who believes in faith alone and eternal security are just the simple-minded ignorant idiots who have never read the Bible and, and can't answer all of these difficult passages like James 2 and, and this, that and the other. And he acts like faith alone and, and one saved, always saved are these huge heresies that are just sweeping across Christianity, left, right and centre. Okay, But the thing is though folks, 
there are an estimated 1.3 billion Catholics in the world. Okay, now I know the statistics, you have to take them with a pinch of salt, but on paper, 1.3 billion Catholics who believe in faith plus works and conditional security. Okay, there are 220 million Eastern Orthodox that believe in faith plus works and conditional security. Okay, there are 280 million Pentecostals. Now, Pentecostalism, obviously uh, a bit more vague because they're, they're not as unanimous about what they believe, but predominantly they tend to have the Arminianist view that you can walk away from salvation. Okay, 70 million Methodists, the Methodist church preaches that you can lose your salvation. 21 million Adventists, okay, 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses, 16 million Latter day Saints. They all believe in faith plus works, they all believe in conditional security. Okay, and so the only thing that's really left over then is reformed Protestantism. But even then, even though they will give lip service to faith alone and they'll give lip service to one saved, always saved, which they tend to call perseverance of the saints, it's still works based when you scratch beneath the surface. And, the, and most of them, if you ask them, they still believe in repent of your sins to be saved. Okay. And even Epiusian Apologetics said in one of his videos, there are many false teachers teaching that repentance doesn't mean turning from sin. Well, really, because I can't find them anywhere, folks. So if he finds them, you know, point them out to me, please. So he doesn't really see the world how it really is. And this is the, this is the crux of the matter, though. He, he wants to tell you that you need to have all of these works of obedience to be saved, and that your faith needs to produce these fruits, okay? Well, the thing is, though, folks, based on what we've seen, if, if you've watched my entire refutation, okay, you're not just reading this, you're not just watching this last video, you actually watch the whole thing. What is the fruit of this guy? He said that once saved, always saved is false because the church fathers didn't believe it, okay? But then in another video, he said, don't follow the church fathers because we don't follow men. But one saved, always saved is false because no men believed it for hundreds of years. And then one minute it was invented by reformers, then it was invented by Gnostics or Augustine. Okay. Or then it went all the way back to Satan in the garden. You know, which is it? He said that we're not justified by Old Testament law, and but we need to do these works of the Spirit, which, uh, by the way, fulfill Old Testament law, the Bible says. Jesus himself preached the Old Testament law. His explanations made absolutely no sense with the biblical narratives, like his explanation about John 10 with the sheep wandering away from the flock and then being snatched by a wolf. But but that's that's not what the chapter actually says. That's not how Jesus described the wolf. The, the, Jesus said the wolf come for the sheep, all the sheep. Not, not They're not waiting for the sheep that wander off. Okay, so he just completely butchered what that passage actually says for his explanation. He was asked by his own listeners, how many sins cause me to lose my salvation? Well, he completely fobbed them off with an irrelevant answer and almost really deflected it onto one saved, always saved to answer the question for him because he made it all about the chastisement of believers. But but we, we looked at that, it doesn't work. And it's not my job to answer for you when someone can lose their salvation. That's your job if you proclaim that. And this this is a crucial one, folks. Remember when we looked at Revelation, okay, now, he normally uses the English Standard Version, that's his preferred translation, but very, very conveniently, he switched to the King James Version on a crucial, crucial passage in Revelation 22 that said, do not add or remove from the words of the prophecy of this book. Well, the King James says book of life, the ESV says tree of life. Somebody's added or removed from the Bible there, okay? And the one verse that, that told them not to do that. So which is it? Why did he feel the need to switch translation for that one verse? And really, this is the one passage in the whole Bible where he really should not have done that. Because now he's proven that he's willing to change what the Bible says, the book of this prophecy, the book of Revelation, when it suits him to do so. Okay. And... Another one, he thought his persecution was coming because somebody posted a picture on social media that wasn't even addressed to him, wasn't even that cruel, and wasn't even personal about anybody. He said that if you, he said that it's you that walks away from God's salvation. It's not God taking your salvation away. But then one of his go-to proof texts is John 15, 
where it says that the father cuts off the branches. So again, which is it? Do you walk away from salvation or does the father cut off the branches? Which one is it? Uh, he and Chip Lutic, they made false claims that, about the Irenaeus exposed to the Gnostics, to Polycarp and, and Marcion because of eternal security. Well, we went through that book. We looked at all these parts where Marcion appeared. Their claims were false. It, it turned out not to be true. One saved, always saved wasn't the issue that was brought up in that book. Um, Adam Apusion, he said that Revelation 20 teaches that believers will be judged by their works. Well, we looked at that passage. He was completely wrong. That's not what it said. The ones that were judged by their works were the ones who were not found in the book of life. Okay. He said that Hebrews 10.26 means that Jesus' sacrifice stops being effective for, for willful sinners. But again, we looked at it in its proper context. We spent ages on it. He lied about it. It turned out not to be true. Okay. He said that Simon the Sorcerer was the clearest example in the, in the New Testament of somebody who lost his salvation. Which is funny because Peter didn't even directly mention his eternal life. And Simon even responded correctly to the reproof. Which, you know, Adam conveniently left that out of his quoted passage. And then another one, you know, he said that you need to be willing to lay down your life for the cause of Christ and seek to be persecuted every single day. If you are true, but you know... He lives in a comfortable house and has a comfortable life. How bad is his persecution, really, folks? And, you know, Jesus did tell his disciples they can flee to another city. Okay, that's what Jesus said. And, and this is what's so tragic about this guy. Constantly telling you about, you know, all this fruit that needs to be produced. Well, all of those things that I've just listed, fruit that, that's the fruit of his faith. Okay, he bore false witness multiple times. So... He can tell you seven ways until Sunday about how he's turned from all of his sins and he's walking in obedience. But the person in the Bible who has the most condemnation, all right, more than any murderer, more than any fornicator or adulterer or idolater, the person with the most condemnation is the false prophet, all right? The person who knows what the Bible says and changes it and teaches contrary to it okay the bible says whosoever believeth in him epiusion apologetic says repent of your sins the bible says salvation is a free gift epiusion apologetic says you need to put the work in the bible says i jesus will lose nothing of those that he gives eternal life to epiusion apologetic says you can walk away the Bible says, justified by faith without works for righteousness and justified by faith and works for the profit of the brethren. Epiusion apologetic says, justified by faith and works for righteousness. The Bible says, Jesus is the one final sacrifice for sins once and forever. Epiusion apologetic says, Jesus' sacrifice stops being effective for you. The Bible says, flee to another city. Epiusion apologetic says, go to your death if you're truly saved. And so, you know, are you going to listen to the voice of the shepherd? Or are you, because the shepherd said, my sheep hear my voice. So whose voice are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to the voice of the Bible, whosoever believeth? Or the voice of Epiusion apologetics, whosoever repenteth of his sin? Which voice are you going to listen to, folks? And his brothers in arms are equally like him. People like Chip Lutick or Keith from Y City Preachers or Hal Chaffee. And in fact, speaking of which, speaking of Hal Chaffee, actually, you know, because Epiusian and Apologetics and Hal Chaffee, they did that video together. And in another video, Adam tried using the Holy Spirit as a manipulative trick to say, well, why would the Holy Spirit be leading me into conditional security? and leading someone else into one saved, always saved, okay? The Holy Spirit can't be leading two people in different directions. Well, you know, it's funny he should bring that up, actually, because Hal Chaffee said that when Jesus said born of water in John chapter 3, that doesn't mean baptism. 
Adam from Epiusion, though, in a video he did about John baptism, he said, oh no, that absolutely does mean baptism. It's ridiculous to think that being born of water doesn't mean baptism. So one says it does mean baptism, another says it doesn't mean baptism. So which one of those two men, if they're going to fellowship together, who's hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and who's lying? Because they both can't be correct. Uh, they, they, they can't both be correct, sorry. Either born of water means baptism or it doesn't. So the Holy Spirit then, quote unquote, seems to be leading them in two different directions. So, you know, it, it just goes to prove that that manipulation falls apart immediately. Again, they debunk themselves. Now, if, if you're looking at me then and you're saying, well, you know what, David from No Nonsense Christianity, you know, judge not lest you be judged. I've spotted plenty of mistakes and flip-flops in your refutation. And the thing is, well, absolutely I did. And you know what, I actually spotted some of those mistakes myself. In fact, just in case you miss them, let me point out some of the mistakes I've made in this refutation. Okay, I'll point out three for you. So, I said in the beginning, uh, towards the beginning, I said that I would try not to resort to immature mockery. Okay, but then as as the refutation progressed, you know, I'm showing pictures of them with a clown hair or, make you know, making them into the, the Three Stooges or Dumb and Dumber or, or whatever. Okay. Another one that I often, I often said video when I ended up breaking it into multiple videos. So I said at the beginning of this video, and it wasn't actually in the beginning of that video, it was in a previous video, because again, I originally envisaged that it would be a long, one, one long thing instead of lots of videos. And I also said I would try and cover the parable that precedes Matthew twenty one thirty two, and I never actually got to that, that parable in the end. And yeah, so you see, I, the thing is, I'm not particularly eloquent in speech, okay? My content on my channel, as you've seen, is not professionally edited. So some of my transitions are a bit abrupt, and, and my video content, you know, I, I've often misquoted things or I've misread certain things. And so, yeah, you know, I have made mistakes. Maybe I have contradicted myself once or twice here and there. But the thing is, though, folks, that's all the more reason why I don't have any confidence in my ability to obey my way to heaven. Okay. So, you know, I, I could have edited some of those blunders out so that you would never know. Okay. But I deliberately left those mistakes in my content so that it might be seen among you that I made those mistakes, okay? Because, yes, perhaps I have been a bit hypocritical, perhaps I have contradicted myself, just like Epiusion did, and, and perhaps I have made mistakes, or I've, I've slightly misread the Bible. But the thing is, though, folks, that's all the more reason why I will never trust my own righteousness to influence my entrance into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to happen. Because, you know what, if, if you think you have to be sinless to go to heaven, you can't afford to make mistakes, okay? Be, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, if, if you're going to stand by that. So, you know, Adam and his buddies, they didn't meet that standard. They, they bore false witness multiple times. They darkened counsel without knowledge. So they prove, even by their own standards, that they're not saved, okay? And you know what? In, in, in free grace soteriology, we're not proud of our sins, folks. We're ashamed of our sins, okay? We, we, we don't think it's okay to sin. But we get accused of preaching that, though, by channels such as EPUC on apologetics. But, but the difference is, though, is, is that they, they won't acknowledge their sins. Because if they did, they'd have to admit they lost their salvation. Whereas in free grace, we, we can acknowledge our faults because... You know, we, we have a heavenly father. We have a high priest, Jesus Christ, our advocate, interceding for us in heavenly places. So so we can admit that, that we have faults and, and we stumble, absolutely. But if you show all of this content that I've done to Epiusion, he's not going to repent, folks, okay? He, he's not going to admit and, and acknowledge that he lied about all those things. Because if he did, he'd have to admit that he lost his salvation then, wouldn't he? And when you have... A workspace salvation you constantly have to move the milestones so that you can still get into heaven okay you have to make excuses and exemptions for your own sins all right and and these people they're, they're just so embarrassing to the cause of christ because they, they just show their their own blindness 
being completely oblivious to their own sins and their own lack of understanding, okay, multiple times over. And, it, and it's not that Epiusion just, just doesn't understand how eternal security works or how faith alone works, or, you know, it's not that he's too intellectually challenged to understand the chastisement of believers or the distinction between the flesh and the spirit, okay. The problem is, folks, he chooses not to understand this stuff, okay? He chooses to reject it. And he willingly chooses to change what the Bible actually says and twist what it actually plainly teaches, okay? So, you know, that that's the thing. He rejects the gospel. He chooses not to accept it. And so that's why he comes up with all these straw men and, and these stupid arguments that make no sense. But... After he's tried to straw man free grace as not being able to answer these difficult passages, making it out as if we just reject the Bible and stick our fingers in our ears and choke on John 15 and this passage and that passage and so on. Well, you know, have I not spent many hours answering those verses? Oh, okay. The, the thing is, folks, he, he's not interested in the answers, okay? He makes it out as if we're just copying and repeating what some reformer said in the 16th century. But, you know, it's funny that, because I haven't actually referenced what Calvin believed. I haven't referenced what Luther believed. I don't care what they believed. And actually, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, those, those men were unsafe, probably. So, you know, fine. I, you know, we just went to the Bible. And so, I, I did try to avoid making too many hypothetical or man-made logical arguments except in a handful of places where perhaps it helped but the, we mainly just stuck to the bible okay we opened the bible we looked at the passage we looked at the language and the specific words that the writers used and we just proved the bible from the bible okay and, and guess what folks we answered john 15 we answered revelation we answered galatians 5 and 6 we answered romans 2 and we answered romans 8 and we answered james chapter 2 we answered hebrews 10 we answered the narrow way okay we answered what happens when a believer sins we answered second peter chapter 1 we proved john chapter 6 and we proved john chapter 10 you know we we answered deny yourself pick up your cross so you know we we just looked at what the bible says and and we also answered his false claims about Irenaeus against heresies when we were at that as well, even though it doesn't even matter to me what Irenaeus believed. We still answered it, okay? And there were many other passages that I would have liked to have dealt with that I just never got to because it's just took me so long to do this refutation and I just want to get it out there now. And I hope I can cover those other passages at another time, God willing. And so Epiusio and Apologetics, he can puff up his own pride about humiliating faith alone and, and tearing down one saved, always saved, and he can say all of these moronic things about how we need to lay down our weapons and we're fighting to defend the wrong kingdom and we just want to destroy the true saints of God. Well, the thing is, if, you, if, if it ever happens that you're watching this, Epiusio and Apologetics, Adam, you brought this fight to us, okay? You declared war on one saved, always saved. You declared war on faith alone. You declared war on free grace. But you destroyed your own arguments. You contradicted your own interpretations and, and your own strategies. You lied and you tried to straw man to try to prove an obedience-based gospel, okay? Completely without irony whatsoever. And so, in doing this, you brought your own false, wicked, demonic gospel crashing down like a house of cards okay and you got absolutely decimated by the king james bible the sharp two-edged sword that tore down every single one of your butter knives so you know what you may have won a few battles here and there but you lost the war Okay, so you want to make this plea to us about using Isaiah that we need to reason together, but you know what? I can't reason with the unreasonable, okay? And according to Romans 3 8, your damnation is just. The only good thing I can say about you, Epiusio and Apologetics, is that you are a great trash collector to keep the work salvation trash away from channels like mine. That's the only good thing that can be, that's your only redeeming quality, okay? Now, you know, to the rest of you, I say that turning from sins is is a lifelong journey, all right? It's it's hard, and, and sometimes we feel like giving up, and our spirit uh, wars against our flesh, and the flesh wars against the spirit, and Paul himself groaned, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? 
But that's why in Free Grace we don't base our gospel on obedience because I've, I've never met anybody who meets the standard ever, okay? And, and the Bible says, you know, it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And so in free grace, that's what we look for. We, we are looking for a future hope. Okay, we're not trying to redeem our flesh now. This flesh is dying no matter what you do with it, okay? So we look to a future hope. And that future hope is that he who believes in Jesus the Christ shall never die, okay? And we wait for the redemption of our bodies uh, when we shall all be changed in a moment and Jesus will raise us up at the last day. But you know what? Even while we're here on this earth, and even if we're going to heaven anyway... There are plenty of good reasons to turn from your sins, okay? Well, well, what are those reasons? Well, it's so that God can bless us in our work and not curse us, okay? So that we will not be chastised by God. Um, so that we will not be lame like the man at the pool of Bethesda. Or we will not be blinded like Samson. Or we will not lose our unborn child like David did. Uh, we, we won't, So that we won't be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Um, you know, no, no, sane Christ, no sane Christian wants those kind of things to happen to him. And so those are all perfectly good reasons to turn from our sins, even if the gospel is without turning from sins. OK, but, you know, false prophets, they just they choose not to understand that. You know, the gospel really isn't that complicated. OK, it's unsaved, wicked, perverted, sick men who make it complicated. When all your faith is in Christ alone without works you can rest knowing that you have a high priest who cannot be touched by our uh, our infirmities he is the one final sacrifice for sin you can have peace knowing that by by one man's obedience many shall be made righteous and so you know, if you've watched this whole refutation series you've watched all of my videos and you've been through all of the passages that I've gone through with Epiusio. Um, I, I hope that this video can boost your confidence in Christ and, and knowledge in the word, that you will too be able to give every man a reason for the hope that is in you. And I, you know, I thank you for watching and I, I hope that this has edified you in some way. And, and if you're not saved and, and, and you were duped by the teachings of Epiusio or people like him, I, I hope that this video has helped you um, and I hope that you will get saved because of the message that you've heard in this refutation. You know, Jesus said, What does it profit, though a man gain the whole world and lose his soul? You know, you see, we, we can't quantify that, but a, a man's soul is, is worth more than the whole world. Okay, and we, we just cannot quantify that kind of a value at all. And if after watching this refutation, you're still thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the truth is anymore. I read the Bible and I still can't understand it properly. And I see people like, no, no, no nonsense Christianity is saying one thing and EPUC on apologetics is saying another thing. And I don't know who to believe and I really don't know if I'm saved. Well, you know, I encourage you to check out my work in progress. Biblical salvation settled once and for all where I'm, I'm working my way through the New Testament and, and it's taking me a long time because you know I'm not in full-time ministry I have to do this around my job and, and other commitments and things you know door-to-door -door soul winning as well so you know it's very taxing time-wise and it, it's taking me a while but I'm working my way through gradually I'm, and I'm trying to deal with all of these difficult passages and difficult sayings like sin no more and servants of sin and, and so on and the, the, there's so much to cover from these passages. And, I, and currently, so far, I've worked my way through John uh, 1 through to, to John 9. Uh, and I'm working on the content for John chapter 10 very soon. Because ultimately, folks, no man knows the day or the hour. Uh, and we can't afford to just say things like, well, we'll find out in the end anyway. Because for many people by then, it, it will be too late. Uh, so we, we need to know this stuff now, okay? Eternal life and, and justification unto righteousness is a free gift, okay? A free gift is not earned, it's not paid for, it's not worked for, it, it doesn't require 
behaviour modification. Okay, it can only be freely accepted or freely rejected. And all of these conditional security tards say that, you know, well, well, it's a free gift, but dot 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 or well it is by faith alone but dot 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 or well it's not by works but you know dot 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 well no no ifs and no buts the bible says salvation is the gift of god case closed end of debate and so that's why i do what i do because you know the the gospel is really simple it that, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and all those that the Father gives unto Jesus that he will raise up. Jesus said, I will lose nothing. So you either believe Jesus with the faith of a small child to fulfill what he said he would fulfill, or you don't. It's that simple. And so I hope that uh, if you've not already done so, you will approach Jesus with that childlike faith and, and believe that he, he really can pull you through and that he will save you if he believes if you believe that he will okay deny yourself and confess christ amen